to the Kirk. We are so glad that everyone, that you are here. It's such a wonderful day. No, I'm just kidding. Although, we might, we might have needed a little bit of rain. So, and cooler temperatures, which is what I like the most about it. All right, a few announcements. Um, quick reminder about the sealing and restripping of the parking lot. It happens on Monday and Tuesday. So the main parking lot will not be accessible for those two days. So that's Monday and Tuesday of this week, so starting tomorrow. Um, so if you need anything from the office or from the church, you better get it today. Yes, Mike. Oh, weather permitting. But still don't try to come to church. So if you need anything, get it today. Um, Want to also remind you about next week um, is the Dino Odell concert at 2 o'clock. I really do hope that everyone will come even if you don't have grandkids or kids, just come and be part of the fellowship. It's going to be a fun afternoon um, with lots of wacky spaceship and dinosaur songs. It's going to be wonderful. And I do believe the twins are going to make an appearance. So if you want to get to hang out with the twins and all their happy flappiness, you should come to the Dino Odell concert. We are also going to do a blessing of the backpacks and purses or whatever we need to so you know that you are being guided and supported as you go back to work the end of summer is happening, or you go back to school. So please come, and we will have a blessings of the backpacks during our worship service next week. Wednesday, August 23rd, um, there will be a free AED and CPR review class. I need to make sure you know this is not a certification course. This is just a review class, so you know how to do basic CPR and also know where our AED machines are here at the church. And it is free and open to anyone on Wednesday. And, oh, I was looking for Kathy. It might be helpful if you let us know if you're going to come. That way we make sure we have a big enough room. But it is free and open to everyone. Um, want to also remind everyone at the last Sunday of the month, um, we are doing our service project for the Matthew 25 project, and we are going to be creating um, the individual snack packs that you can leave in your car and you give them when you see some folks um, that might be homeless or just need a little pick-me-up. There are still items that we that are needed, um, and you can sign up that on Sign Up Genius, or there's a list on the service desk of things that we still need. Or you can see Gina O'Brien or Janice Mayfield if you have any more questions about that. If you can bring them to the church before August 23rd. Um, or, you know, when you come to CPR, just make sure you bring your stuff. And then we'll assemble them on the 27th right after worship. Um, also, wanted to let you know that we have these handy-dandy little notebooks. These are... Um, retired, I didn't want to say old, they are retired Ritual of Friendship pads. And that have, you know, they're cute with leather. And you could, if you have a little notebook, you could stick it in there. And there's a pen slot. So if you want to look cool, you know, when you start taking notes somewhere, just flip this out and go, hey, yeah, look at this. Um, but they are free for the taking. So if you would like one, please feel free to grab one. They're, they'll be outside in the narthex. Um, I think that might be it. But this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in this beautiful, cool weather and the fact that we are fellowshipping together. Let us worship God. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, wow. So this is what it feels like to be up here. Hi. Hi, everyone. Okay, I promise not to bore you all today.
so please do not fall asleep. <laughs> but all that are able, please stand up and join me in the call to worship. Sometimes we wonder how we have gotten through some difficult situations. God has been with us, lifting and comforting our spirits. We struggle and worry. God's loving presence sustains and strengthens us. Listen for God's call to you. The Lord, we are listening and seeking your guidance. Amen. Please join us for hymn number 307 as printed in your bulletin. God of grace and God of glory. Patient Lord, we know that you call us to service, but we often feel inadequate. We love to make excuses for not doing something or for doing something or we have heartedly. Remind us again of your loving and guiding presence. Forget us when we stumble and falter. Turn us again to you, serving joyfully and confidently. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We read Ephesians, Ephesians that we were chosen by God before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before God in love. We try, but it is hard to be holy and blameless. We also read that we were marked with the seal of the Holy Spirit, which is the guarantee of our inheritance as God's own people. We have the privilege of knowing that God also promised in Jesus to forgive us according to the richness of God's grace. With this in mind, let us offer our unison confession. Let us pray. Patient Lord, we know that you call us to service, but we often feel inadequate. We love to make excuses for not doing something 
of her doing something wholeheartedly. Remind us again of your loving and guiding presence. Forgive us when we stumble and falter. Turn us again to you, serving joyfully and confidently. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hear again the good news because of the riches of God's grace. In Jesus, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our sins, all gifts of God's generous and amazing grace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. You may be seated. And it makes me feel like several people in this room probably needed to say that prayer again. <laughs> Things happen because God has them happen that way. Prayers this day, we have several. Galen Strayer is asking for prayers. She has uh, abdominal surgery on Tuesday. So we lift her up for, um, and all of her medical team for a safe and pr a surgery that is successful and for her recovery. We have a prayer of joy for Ava Axtell. Cancer is in remission. She rang the bell at Dallas Children's hospital. So we give thanks for God's presence. Uh, we pray for Joshua. This is the nephew of John and Patty. He's in Florida, uh, survived physically a suicide attempt. So we offer prayers for wholeness and for healing. There is much work to be done, a long road ahead. And so we offer our prayers for Joshua also, for John and Patty, they ask for prayers for their daughter and their granddaughter, Amanda and Anne, for safe travel. We also pray for Ashley and your family as you prepare to travel. We pray for Mid-American Nazarene, um, the death of their 19-year-old player, Mizell Law. And this was a heat-related incident after practice, and so we pray for the Law family as well as for the Mid-American Nazarene community. From Leslie and Phil Youngs, we pray for Phil's cousin, Donald Schroff, who is now in hospice care. And we pray this day for all of those in Hawaii with the raging wildfires, for those who are battling the flames, for those who have lost loved ones in the fire, for all of the loss and damage to property. And we pray for God's mercy upon them, as well as for their communities to know that they are being lifted and surrounded by God's love, that we may find tangible ways to reach out. Let us pray. Eternal God, we come before you lifting our minds and our hearts to you in prayer. You know our prayers that are sighs too deep for words. You know our prayers that we stumble through. We lift them to you as your children, crying out for help. We are mindful of all those who are sick, who are injured, in mind and in body and in spirit. We pray that your loving arms enfold them, that your healing mercies be upon them, that you restore them to health and to wholeness. We pray for those in the midst of natural disaster. As people here still pick up from recent storms, as Hawaii is struggling with wildfires, may your people know they are not alone. You are with them. And may we know to stand with our brothers and sisters in Christ that we may offer, as we are able, outreach and help. We pray for our world ripped apart by violence. 
May we find your way of peace. May we find your way of abundance that we may let go of our scarcity mindset and live into the abundance which you have promised. Be with us and give us courage to live into the call you have laid upon our lives. That we may be your light in a dark and weary world. We ask these prayers in the one prayer Christ taught, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Today's scripture reading comes from... Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 through 14. Let us listen for God's word. Blessed be the God and the Father of Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love, he destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that has set forth in Christ. As a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ, we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who are the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praises of his people. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit, this is the pledge of our inheritance towards the redemption of God's own people to the praise of his glory.
to worship Thee. Our second text this morning comes from the book of Esther. But I don't want to just read this chapter four, so you're going to have to give me a minute here, Mike, because this story, there's lots of moving parts and pieces, and it's not one we dwell in very often. It's not one that we are overly familiar with. So Esther, King Xerxes of the Persian Empire, ruled over 127 provinces from India to Ethiopia. His throne was in the city of Susa. And some of what I'm reading right now is from a children's Bible. Because children's Bibles, I think, sometimes are the best way to learn some of the stories. So, King Xerxes had a party that lasted 180 days to show off the wealth of the empire. He then gave a party in the palace for everyone in the city of Susa. For seven days, everyone is invited, and he told all of his stewards to give them as much wine as they wanted to drink. Now, Queen Vashti had a party for the women of the palace. And on the final day of Xerxes' seven-day festival, he ordered his eunuchs to go tell Queen Vashti to come before him wearing her royal crown because he wanted to show off her great beauty. The queen refused. So Xerxes asked his advisors what must happen, and the advisors said that Vashti was wrong, and all the women in the kingdom would hear about what she did, and they would stop obeying their husbands. And so fearing that the women would be influenced to disobey their husbands, a command was announced. It was translated into the languages of the 127 provinces that all women will respect their husbands, and Vashti was no longer the queen. So then begins the search for a new queen. There's a young girl named Esther. Her real name was Hadassah. She was an orphan, and her parents had been part of the people who had stayed behind in exile. So the Persians took over, the, took, took over Babylon. People were released. Some went back to Jerusalem. She was part of what we know as the Diaspora Jews. So she was still living in Persia. When her parents died, she went to live with her cousin Mordecai in the palace, for he was a palace scribe. Esther and Mordecai were Jews. While others had returned to Jerusalem, some had remained now, there were many in Susa who did not like the Jews, but the king was wise and listened to Mordecai. One man who did not like the Jews was Haman, and one day the king gave Haman a special job. And the king announced that because Haman was so important, everyone should kneel and bow down. Now, that made Haman happy, but Mordecai would not bow down. For God was the only person Mordecai would bow to. That made Haman angry. Haman was even more angry to learn that Mordecai was a Jew. And so Haman set out to punish Mordecai and all of the Jewish people. Haman saw that the king loved Esther and that he listened to Mordecai. And that too made him angry. So Haman planned for all the Jews to be killed. Now, Mordecai overheard some guards plotting the death of the king, and he told Esther, who told the king, and they saved the king's life. And so this kind of catches us up to where we are in the text. So Haman has now gotten the king to sign this decree that all the Jews should be killed, because the king does not know that Mordecai is a Jew, nor that Esther is a Jew. When Mordecai learned all that had been done, he tore his clothes and put on sackcloth and ashes and went through the city, wailing with a loud and bitter cry. He went up to the entrance of the king's gate, for no one might enter the king's gate clothed with sackcloth. 
In every province, wherever the king's command and his decree came, there was great mourning among the Jews, with fasting and weeping and lamenting, and most of them lay in sackcloth and ashes. When Esther's maids and her eunuchs came and told her the queen was deeply distressed, she sent garments to clothe Mordecai so that he might take off his sackcloth, but he would not accept them. Then Esther called for Hathach, one of the king's eunuchs who had been appointed to attend her, and ordered him to go to Mordecai to learn what was happening. Hathach went out to Mordecai in the open square of the city in front of the king's gate, and Mordecai told him all that had happened to him and the exact sum of money that Haman had promised to pay into the king's treasury for the destruction of the Jews. Mordecai also gave him a copy of the written decree issued in Susa for their destruction so that he might show it to Esther, explain it to her, and charge her to go to the king to make supplication to him and entreat him for her people. Hathak went and told Esther what Mordecai had said. Then Esther spoke to Hathak and gave him a message for Mordecai. All the king's servants and the people of the king's provinces know that if any man or woman goes to the king inside the inner court without being called, there is but one law, to be put to death. Only if the king holds out the golden scepter to someone may that person live. I myself have not been called to come in to the king for 30 days. When they told Mordecai what Esther had said, Mordecai told them to reply to Esther, Do not think that in the king's palace you will escape any more than all the other Jews. For if you keep silent at this time, relief and deliverance will rise for the Jews from another place. But you and your father's family will perish. Who knows? Perhaps you have come to royal dignity for just such a time as this. Then Esther said in reply to Mordecai, Go gather all the Jews to be found in Susa and hold a fast on my behalf, and neither eat nor drink for three days, night or day. I and my maids will also fast as you do. After that, I will go to the king, though it is against the law, and if I perish, I perish. Mordecai then went away and did everything as Esther ordered him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You see, we don't spend a lot of time in the book of Esther. If you are curious and want to know a little bit more about the story, Hollywood put out a, a rather good rendition of it called One Night with the King. It is on Amazon Prime. I watched it a week ago or so. The complete story of Esther, however, is read in the Jewish faith on the holiday of Purim. And it's usually in late February or early March, and it's the celebration of the saving of the Jewish people, particularly in this story of the saving of the people by Esther from Haman. Now, if you've ever seen this read, I've watched a Purim this during COVID. I watched this on Zoom. This is a very rowdy festival. And they read the story, and every time you hear Mordecai or Esther, they cheer and every time you hear Haman, they go, boo! And so it's very participatory. And it brings that story back to life. And they're all reminded that Esther has the ear of the king. And even though this call comes from her uncle, not explicitly from God, her call is just like the other call text, like we listened to last week. She has an excuse. Mordecai says, go before the king. She's like, I haven't been called, and if I go and I'm not invited, I could die. But she goes. She is reminded by Mordecai that she will not escape this fate. And so she summons her courage, and that's why she asks for prayer and for fasting from the Jewish community. It's a show of solidarity and support. Wouldn't you agree it's always easier to do a hard thing when you know you're not going it alone? You may be the one having to take the step, but if you know you have support of family and friends behind you, you at least don't feel quite so exposed. So our world is in crisis. 
We have groups on the margins who fear for their safety every day. This list could go on and on and on, but if you look at all the anti-trans bills that are going on through various government agencies, civil rights is still a big issue. Women's rights. Immigration. That list could go on. We are a community in crisis. And each one of us has a sphere of influence. We have people who will stop and listen to what we have to say. And we need to use that privilege. We need to use that power for good. So in this story, sometimes I can see where we might be the community. We might be the people called to fast and to pray. And Presbyterians don't often fast. But we might be the ones called to fast and pray. To pray for a particular outcome. We might be Mordecai, the one to sound the alarm. We might be Esther, the one to step forward with courage. So I've been, I was thinking about this this week, and one of the phrases that I hear often in our society is, why don't you go back to where you came from? The New York Times actually ran an article. They asked their readers. 16,000 people responded that they had had that encounter, that someone had told them to go back where they came from. We've seen it in the halls of power, We've seen it with 12-year-olds in grocery stores. We've seen it with people who have a Hispanic last name and someone says, go back to where you came from. Even though they were born in America. Threats of physical violence are a reality for many in the trans community. We see these problems as you hear about 911 calls about people who are out walking their dog or fishing in a neighborhood pond or having a barbecue in a park and somebody else doesn't think they belong there. And yes, I know we call them Karens. It bothers me that that's my name too. <laughs> I try not to be that Karen. But we have people who are terrified of anyone who's other. And that's what this story kind of illuminates. The king was wise. He listened to different people. He didn't say, go back to where you came from. And so we too are called to be in that space. When we hear that, if you're in a grocery store and you hear someone say, go back to where you came from, Perhaps you're in that space for a reason to step in. And if it's no more than stepping up to the person who that's been said to and say, I'm sorry, that person was so rude. And standing in solidarity with another. Or perhaps you're called to confront them. And that's what you are the only one who can find out in the midst of that situation. But I don't think opportunities come along by accident. I think sometimes we are put in places because we have an influence to bring to bear. Or I think sometimes people are brought into our lives because of what they can do to change a situation and help us. So I wonder what our proximity to power and our circles of influence, how do we use those to make a positive difference? Not only as individuals, but I also think about as a congregation. So the Kirk has become a Matthew 25 congregation, and this is an initiative of the PCUSA. And Matthew 25 is about finding the least and the lost. How do we feed the hungry, clothe the naked, visit the imprisoned and the sick? There are lots of ways in which this congregation has already been engaging in those activities. And I wonder 
What would happen to take that one step farther? Harvesters and Grace Ministries and Cherith Brook, they're all worthy organizations. But what happens when a congregation stakes a claim and then works for policy changes? How do we advocate in a, in a realm where people have power to do something to make a lasting change? Perhaps we're called to use our influence and power to do something. So Esther is called to step up. And the other phrase that came up for such a time as this is often used. And this is where that comes from. But there was another one that's spoken by a first century Jewish scholar, Hillel. If not you, then who? If not now, when? Those words were also spoken by Ronald Reagan at one point. Those words have been spoken by Emma Watson, otherwise known as Hermione in Harry Potter. She used those to kick off her women's rights campaigns with the United Nation. You have power. You have influence. You have the ability to make a difference. And so we have to summon our courage like Esther to step out in faith, to make difficult decisions. We have to remember there is a responsibility to a larger community. Sometimes we do things not because it benefits us necessarily, but because it's for the good of the larger body. Because we may have voice where others may not. We may not understand the full story, but our faith can be our anchor. And just like we talked last week, God does not call the equipped, but God equips the called. So as you go through your week, be aware of opportunities as they present themselves to stand, to make a difference, to offer voice for those with no voice, to use your power for the good of the larger whole. And may we embrace our calling and we, may we trust that God goes with us and that we too are here for such a time as this. Amen. What a wonderful uh, sermon by Reverend Karen. It's called Call to Do the Hard Things. So the liturgist spots are very much open and available. So let us do the hard things. And
sign up. Alrighty, with that being said, <clears throat> our worship service always includes a moment of thanksgiving. This is our opportunity to make the note of God's many gifts in our lives and to pledge ourselves to use our gifts to serve God as we strive to make the world a better place by investing in other people and the common good. We are grateful for what you do in our Kurt community and in your other communities to share God's love and God's compassion. If you're looking for a place to do that, we'd love to have you join us here at the Kirk. We cannot do the work we do without your support, your energy, your compassion, your financial support, as well as sharing your time, talents, empowers our ministry and our mission to be minded, loving, and being on site. We have offering plates available. take part in our common work we thank you for your please join gracious God we thank you for the gifts that do not belong to us The faith who are created in your image. For their need to become our need. Abel, please join me in our number 410 as printed in the bulletin. God is calling through the whisper. that God is calling through the whisper, and it may be through him in prayer, in art. Listen, hear God calling, and as you are listening, go forth into the world with courage. Have heart. Take care of one another. Hold fast to what is good. Do not return evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted Support the weak, help the afflicted, honor all people, love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the Holy Spirit, now and forevermore. Amen. 